phosphate. This is designed to both clean and prime the metal prior to painting. The phosphate cleans the metal. The ELFO electrostatically primes the surface. The vehicle stays on the same carrier it left the body shop on. The primed surface is then dry. From here it proceeds to the paint shop where the paint primer surfacer is applied. White primer is used on vehicles to be painted white. Dark gray is used for all other colors. The main purpose of the primer surfacer is to reduce the amount of UV rays passing through the clear coat finish where they might cause a chemical reaction between the base coat and the primer resulting in paint delamination or flaking. Four robots apply the primer. The surface is then dried before painting. The plant is equipped with ten paint spray modules. A barcode located on the front of the carrier tells the robot what color is to be applied and where to spray the paint. The robots pick up the proper amount of paint for the job and atomize it for application with water. General Motors uses waterborne paint which is more environmentally friendly than others such as lacquer or enamel. It takes just three minutes for four robots to apply the paint. Once the base coat has been applied, the unit undergoes a three-minute flash-off at 165 degrees Fahrenheit. This is designed to extract the water from the base coat paint. This is followed by an application of acrylic enamel polyurethane clear coat. Four robots use Bell sprayers to apply the clear coat. These are special applicators that apply the finish in a mist. From here, the unit goes through an observation area, and then it's on to a 12 to 15 minute bake at 165 degrees Fahrenheit. This dries the paint enough that sanding could be done if minor flaws needed to be repaired. From here, the unit goes to a final bake of 20 minutes at 165 degrees Fahrenheit. If a two-toned vehicle were being produced, the secondary or the accent color is finished first. It is then hand taped and papered before the second color is applied. Once the job is released from the paint department, an order is sent to local suppliers such as Lear Seating to produce the required seats for that specific vehicle by style and color. Remember, the plant operates on the just-in-time delivery system requiring outstanding efficiency and communication. And as we have seen here, the body and paint shops are extremely efficient thanks in no small part to automation. Once the painting and drying process is complete, our truck heads for the trim department for interior finishing. There is anywhere from a two and a half to a five hour lead time from the end of paint to the start of general assembly. In order to complete the cab trim process, it's necessary to transfer the body to a new carrier. This is done at the cab box transfer, where the cab and the box are transferred onto a trim automatic guided vehicle. Front end sheet metal, including the hood, fenders, and the tailgate, go upstairs to an electrified monorail system and are moved to a separate line where finishing takes place. They will be matched up with the body later in the cycle. The box goes along for a ride on the top of the carrier while the cab is assembled. I mentioned earlier that the doors are only mounted on temporary hinges during body priming and painting. Now they are removed and mounted to an electrified monorail system and sent to the door line for finishing. With the doors removed, there's easier access to the cab for assembly. Now the first piece to go into the cab is the firewall insulation. This is followed by installation of the upper and lower latch strikers for the third and the fourth door. The floor sound deadening insulation is installed at a stock pick station, which is where parts are placed into the cab for installation at the next work island. Here we see the operator placing the brake booster, duct work for the heating and air conditioning, and the weather stripping for the rear door into the cab. The cab has now arrived at the next workstation and is having these parts installed. Here we see the brake booster and the weather stripping being added. The parking brake is installed prior to additional interior finishing. Floor carpeting is next. The carpets are received from the supplier in sequence to match the build schedule by color as the job is released from the paint shop. 
And here's an interesting point. The necessary holes in the carpets are cut using a water jet that operates at 40,000 pounds of pressure per square inch. The water is recyclable and environmentally friendly. The headliner is installed next. The heating, ventilating, and air conditioning follow this. Now, the instrument panel is installed as a single piece. This is just one of the assembly areas where we see automation working hand-in-hand -hand with manual labor, thus improving the process. Once installed, the dash cover and passenger assist handle finishes the job. Trim and seat belts for the outboard rear seat passengers are installed along with sill trim for the rear window. The jack and the jack tool kit are then added. And finally, trim molding for the A-pillar and for the dash panel add the finishing touch. From here we go to a very interesting part of assembly, installation of the windshield and rear windows. It's where we meet the robots again. The operator picks a windshield depending upon model with or without a compass in the rear view mirror and the robot takes over. First step is to clean the edge of the glass and then to prime it for the sealer. The windshield is then handed off to another robot that applies the urethane sealer and installs it into the cab. The sealer takes 48 hours to cure. As the glass is installed, it pushes out any air around the edge of the windshield and the urethane, creating a suction that holds the windshield in place. Laser cameras guide the robots into the correct position for installation. While difficult to see, they are the rectangular units painted in red. Two robots do the rear quarter glass installation. One applies the sealer to the glass and then hands it off to its partner. Both windows are installed at the same time by the robots in order to equalize the pressure being exerted against the side of the cab. The table supporting the cab is capable of moving up and down and turning 90 degrees. Our cab is now ready for seat installation. Seats are ordered from the supplier at the time the job is released from the paint shop. They are received at the plant on special carriers in the correct build sequence to match each truck color. Again, we see an outstanding application of automation assisting the assembler with the rear seat installation. A little finishing work is needed before we add the front seats. Here's the driver's side airbag being installed. Next to follow is the center console. And the front seats, they arrive on the overhead monorail carrier. Now the operator removes the seat from the carrier and using the assist arm installs it in the cab. Because this seat is power operated, he attaches the electrical wires and at the same time he's going to add grease to the hinges in preparation for the later remarrying of the doors with the cab. Next stop is the addition of the cruise control module and the front cowl cover. And this is followed by the center high-mounted stoplight. Now the doors can be attached. Having been outfitted by trim and hardware on a separate line, they are once again united with the cab. Doors are finished with weather stripping. And the sill plate is added to finish off the cab. From here, it's off to the marriage station to be matched up with box and chassis. When a truck comes into the marriage station, the cab and box are lifted off of the automatic guided vehicle. The AGV goes back to the trim and hardware line to pick up another cab and box coming down from the paint department. The cab and box are then brought to the same level position for mounting to the frame. You can see the arms of the body mount fixtures positioning themselves in preparation for the mounting to the frame. There are the orange units to the left of the vehicle. 
The chassis is indexed onto the chassis AGV. The body mount fixtures go into place and the cab is lowered onto the chassis. The body mount bolts are driven in automatically from below. The fixtures retract and the AGV leaves the marriage station. Here we see a good example of ergonomics being applied during the assembly process. The operator stands in a shallow side pit, working at a comfortable height with no unnecessary bending of the neck. He's using a hydraulic articulating arm to position the gun or fixture as he installs the body mounts. This operator is attaching the master cylinder to the firewall, having just fastened a clip onto the brake booster. Put on the master cylinder, start the nuts, and then torque them down. This is radiator evacuation and fill. And the first step is to evacuate the air out of the radiator. Then fill the reservoir and the system. And then level the fluid in the reservoir. Stepside models have a wheelhouse liner above the rear wheel and axle. Here the liner is being installed. Again, note that the installer is working in a